You are listening to 90.7 KALX Berkeley. I am Stormy Phoenix, and I am with the multi-talented and instrumentalist Teresa Wayman, Hi. a.k.a. TT. Hi. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you're from the band Warpaint, and mm-hmm. we're here tonight at Rickshaw Stop. How is it like in the Bay Area so far? It's amazing, per usual. Very good vibes, good weather, nice things and people to look at, and I feel like there's always something special going on around here, you know? Yeah. Like, Did you have any plans that happened in 4th of July? Uh, no, but I mean, I just live in the, I, I don't, I live in, El, I just moved out to El Sereno recently, which is more east than I've ever lived, and I had a surround sound of fireworks, but not just sound, like surround visual. Uh-huh. It just goes off there, like, I don't think it does anywhere else in the world. It's just constant from before it even gets dark, so I it's pretty exciting, you know? Yeah. That's what I wished for when I was little. Like, I was waiting for it to get dark, and there'd be that one fireworks show, and you'd be like, oh, my God, these things are going off in the sky, and it looks beautiful. And yeah. that was just, like, everywhere. Everywhere. I know. I think, for me, my favorite's the Disneyland fireworks, so they do the characters. But, yeah, our last firework yeah. ended around, like, 11 o'clock at night. So Ours ended at, like, 3 a.m. in L.A. Whoa, they know how to keep the party. Yeah. <laughs> I went to a firework competition once. And like different countries, it was up in Vancouver, BC, and we sat out by the the water. And each country submitted their firework competition. It was like the most insane graphics you've ever seen made by fireworks. And each country did their own. And Brazil was incredibly beautiful because it was just like all so colorful and like flamboyant. And then China was had their like the all the traditional sort of like figures that they do with the animals of the like zodiac and stuff it was really cool wow i didn't know about yeah any firework people competition take it really far all right and then everyone else is talking about the world cup but they should talk about fireworks <laughs> the firework world cup yeah so i know that most of our listeners know that you're the original founder a uh, member of war paint singer and guitarist one of them yeah one of them yes and you've been with the band for over 10 years i want to know have you ever imagined staying with a band that long what's the secret in keeping a long-term band together I would say, you know, being a self-reflective person and somebody who's willing to think like, okay, maybe I, what am I contributing to something that doesn't work, for instance, like if there's any hardship or problems, what am I bringing to the situation instead of being, you know, in denial about that stuff and being defensive. And I think that all of us are equally good at that and Mm -hmm. to the point where we can say, you know, okay, sorry, I that was what I was, I'm working on this because I don't want to be that way and I want this thing to work and like, you know, it's putting your ego aside sometimes Mm -hmm. and just being a nice person, you know, and I think that's the most important thing, you know, it's just, and realizing the band isn't about any one of us more than any of the other and that's what's so special about the band and if you want to go off and do something else where you get to be more in control, that's fine, but that's not what war pain is about and just you know being cool with that that's awesome about like not letting your ego get in the way now you've war has been together since 2004 so 14 years together you've uh ladies had like you know lucky enough to tour in numerous festivals throughout you've toured with big bands like the xx depeche mode which i was actually there at the concert <laughs> at cool. oracle arena in oakland yeah so i knew that was going to be an awesome show because you were touring with depeche mode and then recently Harry Styles from mm-hmm. One Direction. Mm-hmm. So how is that like touring with these bands? Because I'm sure the vibe was different because each performer, you know, their music is so, you know, yeah. different and all that. I mean, I feel like the more professional and the more experienced people are, I think the better they mm-hmm. are, the nicer they are to be around, the more comfortable they are, the less they have to prove almost. I mean, this is my experience. So far, I feel like you know, the, these bigger characters that we've toured with have been the coolest. You know, they've done something that's gotten them there and they don't feel like they have to prove themselves all the time. And sometimes when I've been touring or opening for bands that don't have that, they're more uptight, like freaked out about, you know, just like the number of people watching them or, or how they appear and stuff, you know, and it's like it's been such a a nice blessing to see how it feels to just you know do good music and have it touch people and then have that work you know like you go with it Mm -hmm. and you don't have to be 
all weird about it. <laughs> Did you have any good memories, like good fun memories touring with, you know, those acts or any other memories? Depeche was nine weeks and it was a big chunk of our life and it was so fun to meet them and their crew and their crew all were like great people, all got along and there was no drama and it just felt so fun and I met some great friends who mm -hmm. I'm still you know friends with and and just seeing how they do their show and feeling like inspired by their sets and the way they put things together and it fueled our fire and it made us realize certain things that we can do and and you know with Harry too it was really fun playing for his audience and I mean I think his audience is going to morph and change over the years but mm -hmm. as of right now it is mostly young women yes and that was really great for us yeah. because, you know, we're an all female Fema band. All, mm -hmm. Yeah, all girl band. And I think we're that that's something good for these girls to see is, um, you know, we some, need more some, all -female some, women bands, yeah. and some women who are just writing their own music. We're mm -hmm. not getting people to come in and write hits for us yeah. and this and that. We're just doing what we want to do because mm -hmm. this is what we feel. And we've been lucky enough to get somewhere with that. You know, we might not be as big as... Beyonce or like some top echelon of pop music but mm -hmm. we are doing that in our lives and I think that that's really important you know you just get just do what you feel and make the music you want to make and be your own writers of your own generation stuff yeah and your own generation uh -huh. and therefore your own generation and your own I don't know whoever wants to follow after that and yeah you got to set an example now you talked about Harry Styles of, he's doing solo, you know, off of One Direction. Depeche Mode, Dave, he's done solo, and you're also doing solo. Mm -hmm. And you just released your new debut project, Love Laws, under your own label, Love Leaks. And I was wondering, did you get any advice or input about going solo from your musical peers, or was this like an intended project that you've always had a passion in doing? I've been aiming for this for about five or six years. And, and it's just taken me that long to kind of just really get there. I couldn't get enough out in war paint, and that's fine, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, that doesn't mean I don't want to be in war paint. That doesn't mean war paint doesn't serve me, mm -hmm. and that I don't serve war paint. There's more, you know, especially because war paint is this thing where we all get to write and contribute. Yes. There's no way that any of us can get out all of our ideas. So have been just, you know, working towards this for a while, and just, you know, and now it's. I finally finished it and got there and put it out and I'm really proud of it and I'm happy to open that door and just see what else is next. And you know, it's great that your bandmates from Warping are supporting you in your solo project, your brother as well as some other friends are uh, helping contribute to Love Laws. Mm -hmm. Now, you said that you've been, you know, thinking about this for five to six years so I know some of these songs are older and then I could hear in the uh, lyrics that you pour your emotions into this. So how was it like creating this this album this like kind of long-term album i think that well for one it was very therapeutic for me i didn't mm -hmm. even realize how therapeutic until after and then i kind of saw that i was I had put to rest some of the things that made me write it mm -hmm. you know things that i didn't understand before i was writing it and that things that i kind of have my head wrapped around now yeah. that i'm done and so that just being a vivid therapy session for me doing it was was really cool my next part of the question was that i know you have an attachment with war paint mm. and then also like this is something therapeutic and personal that and you're one of the writers for war paint you know when did you say at one point or like okay these songs that i'm writing they're for me they're for love laws and not mm. for war paint most of them were pretty obvious uh, a lot of the times though it's because i've already written um, multiple parts on them you know, so then I know that I can't bring that to war paint because mm -hmm. it already has like a guitar part, a bass line, and a, a drum beat that I've programmed and yeah. a melody. So it's like it doesn't leave room for anyone else. Mm -hmm. um, if the, if something like that has happened while writing the song and it's all come out, then I just don't even bother bringing it to war paint. Yeah. Um, there have been a few exceptions to that. You know, like with Whiteout, for instance, I had a drum beat programmed. I had a guitar part didn't have a melody and had a bass line written for two parts of that song but I knew that that song could be great for war paint and I structured it with what I had mm -hmm. sent it to Emily and she wrote a melody scratched it out and then brought it to Jen and Stella 
and Jen took my the baseline that I had for the first parts, used some of that, and then also added to it for a later part, and Stella evolved the beat. I kind of had more, and it worked to give it to the band, but yeah. I had to be really, uh, you know, like, open about it. Yes. You know, like, maybe Jen doesn't want to use my baseline. It turns out she liked part of that so she used some of that and then it worked you know and then but then also added things I couldn't even have thought of and mm-hmm. Stella too evolving the beat so that was a little bit of a different circumstance but for the most part you know it's like I don't want to bring anything to war paint that doesn't have too much on it because yeah. I want everyone to feel like it's theirs mm-hmm. too yeah yeah, so when you have multiple creative brains working together, you guys all want to contribute to each part. Yeah. So, you know, again, speaking about emotions, you stated that Love Laws is a down-tempo, pretty sexy, a bit emotional record. And then when I'm hearing the album, I'm definitely hearing, like, loneliness, heartaches, ups and downs, uh, relationships. How does it feel to strip your raw vulnerable side and just share it to the audience at this point it feels really good just being open just exposing yourself yeah i mean like i don't really see any other way Mm -hmm. i suppose you know i was consciously more straightforward with this album than i have been with a lot of my lyrics in the past yeah and i just felt like i want to be relatable and that's something I really value in... And be honest. Yeah, be yeah. honest and be relatable and say, you know, like, I don't know if you can be as relatable when you're shrouded in metaphor mm-hmm. or when you only make sense to yourself, you know? And so I just wanted to be very clear and, and I didn't... That was just the only way I saw to go about it. Now, I like that you said the album, too, is therapeutic because what I do like about it, it does feel therapeutic. It has this, like, hypnotism, and it's funky, and it's dreaming, and, like, the song I've Been Fine, which is already out on YouTube. There was a lot going on in the video. Like, let's talk about the making of the video because I definitely, as I was watching it, felt an emotional impact. That's good. To it. Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah, no, I wanted um, there to be... I mean, I wanted that video to even go more extreme than it did, kind Mm -hmm. of. But me and my friend came up with kind of this idea and went with it, you know? It was like me sitting there alone and kind of watching watching myself, watching a memory of myself Uh in this place where maybe I've been before with the person that I was in love with and you're not in love with this person Uh anymore. And what is that, you know? Like, these moments in your life, they happen and then they pass and, like, they're just... It's, now were these moments from it, a different time because it looked very western like yeah yeah exactly that that's like from a time before uh-huh and you're not in that time anymore yeah and what do you do like you know in in the end of the video too it's like don't take it all too seriously either you know fine or whatever yeah because you're like happy and, like, and stuff yeah mm-hmm. whatever it happened it's done now with all these themes present about like loss of love and you know relationship is there a message that you want to share with your fans about relationships like what advice would you give to the millennial generation about relationships well I think that I've been a person who's kind of been obsessed with that like love and intimacy because I feel like I'm a very romantic person and then there's this other side of myself too that's just like you know loves my friends and I love life and I like create and I'm very curious and I could spend so much time just like sounds really nerdy but like being in school or schooling myself or like learning things and this and that and I have these two sides to me and then I was like didn't want to admit that I was also like romantic person Mm -hmm. who was kind of obsessed and I think that you know with relationships and intimacy and I think that I was giving too much time to that too much emphasis on that and I think maybe a lot of people in general and girls maybe too like just giving too much time and emphasis to that and not cultivating these things inside themselves that make up who you are and who make in the end make these relationships that you go for way more fulfilling Mm -hmm. and make the right things come to you as I'm not chasing things anymore I don't want to chase that I want to just chase myself and Uh chase who Focus I am. you, let them come to you. Yeah, and yeah. then let that, those things come into my sphere. Uh-huh. And not to have like some ultimate control or something, but just to be like, you know what, I want it more on my terms. Mm-hmm. And 
I just feel a lot better, a lot healthier about it. I feel so much more balanced and I feel so much happier. My life is so exciting for me. Like I have all these things that I could put my energy into all the time mm -hmm. and all these things that fascinate me. And, you know, like, of course, intimacy and love and sex and, you know, flirtation, all that stuff is so fun, too. But yeah. I don't know, just got to like that stuff comes easily. You just got to dive into who you are. Mm -hmm. It's like the but honeymoon phase. Totally. Yeah. But like chasing it all the time is just going to like. Too exhausting. It's, it, it, Waste of time. And it's not, yeah, <laughs> not going to get you what you want. Mm -hmm. And in the end, you're going to be like. Oh, I want it. I want that. And it's not coming to me. And it's like, it's not coming to you because you're not even coming to yourself. Yeah. You know? Oh my gosh. This is great advice. I'm like, where's my friend? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, you say you're a romantic person. How romantic are you? Like, what's romance to you? I fantasize. I've always have since I was really young about like this, like perfect meeting of two mm -hmm. people, you know, and being like, so in love and like a romantic you know, comedy like, like that's like what i going, want or yeah just being like i don't know i used to make up stupid stories in my head all the time when i was a little girl or like you know funnily enough i'd be like <laughs> when i was like sitting on the toilet or something yeah like, yeah like what <laughs> sounds so tough. it's okay i want to hear <laughs> it i'd be like when you're sitting on the toilet uh-huh i'm like <laughs> sitting here nothing to do so i'd like make up stories about like the, the little girl and the guy and then like meet up or blah 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 like i don't know like princess and fairy tale stories yeah. and stuff so i've been like that kind of person and i feel like also as i got older i was kind of you know i just i like intimacy i like those moments mm -hmm. with people and so i feel like i was always excited about having that or finding that like that was the most fulfilling thing I could have at the end of a night I realize now that not always the case you mm -hmm. know and especially having a kid too I realize like my kid and having my kid is like so fulfilling amazingly fulfilling yeah you don't feel empty and like you know I'm raised by a single mom so I feel like I I fulfill her life like if I yeah. wasn't in her life you know yeah and that's not a horrible responsibility mm -hmm. right like no, that's not. just a beautiful thing yes I still I mean I have a boyfriend so I have intimacy in my life and all that it's like not like I've given it up but it's I just think that I have a healthier perspective on it your responses just like leads me to another question so <laughs> you you're talking about you know being a mom you're very busy you're a musician businesswoman and a mother you know how do you balance all that how do you balance a, being a musician and being a mom at the same time it's not easy at all it's mm -hmm. not an easy thing to figure out I think that you just end up doing it because you have to you're like okay I'm going on a tour yeah I have to this is where I'm going to be making some money yeah this is what I do you know, and then I'll come back and I'll be here for a month solid and I won't have anything to do and figure out uh, as you go along, you just justify it in some way or another. Yes. It's not, but it's not easy. And even tonight, me being gone because uh, I was gone for six weeks recently, it's not easy. And mm -hmm. my son is 12. You yes. know, he's like, why are you going again? Haven't you played enough shows? You know, <laughs> it's like, well, yeah, you know, as they get older, they eventually understand. Yeah. Now, what have you learned? performing as a solo artist versus playing in your band it's kind of starting over in a way you know like I help with load in load out um set up I I'm much more hands-on in this situation which I used to be years mm -hmm. ago though for years now have had people working with us like our roadie or guitar tech or mm -hmm. whatever who sets up for us and things like that and I don't know like it's nice being like kind of back at the beginning again which is fun and just feeling like a part of the whole system like from the ground up and I've also learned that I like as much as I'm doing my own thing I still love collaborating with people and if I'm hiring people to play in a band with mm -hmm. me and play parts that I've written I still want them to bring something and feel it for themselves and yeah. bring something of their own I really love collaboration and I also like working with different people and learning different people's styles and, yeah. and stuff, you know, and it's, that's exciting. To Brings me. up more musical inspiration. Yeah. 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 And so what can we expect for tonight's TT show? Or is that much of a spoiler alert? I'm going to play my album and I'm going to play one song that isn't on the album. Okay. And that's pretty much it. I mean, I'm not going to be like stripping or anything and I might wear some glitter not yes, I, that do, I do see that. Like, oh, like, like, it's like a different war paint. Yeah, <laughs> it's Teresa paint. Wear some glitter. Yeah, this is gonna be so off the chain. <laughs> All right. Well, that 
concludes our interview, but um, I do want to play a short, fun game with you. Okay. If it's a, it's a trivia game, multiple okay. choice, I'll verbally tell you. You know, talking about going back to a romance, and you grew up in the 90s, so mm-hmm. I thought, well, you know, wouldn't it be fun to play like a 90s romance kind of pop culture game? Okay. So, I came up with some multiple choice, and I'm just going to read them to you, and you just tell me. I like which... book with it. Oh, thank you. It lights up, right? Almost yeah. lost it in Berkeley, and then amazing. I found it and made it way back home. Mm-hmm. So, here's uh, starting off number one. There are only four questions. So, according to BuzzFeed, they were the number one 90s TV couple. Was it A, Ross and Rachel on Friends, B, Corey and Topanga from Boy Meets World, or C, Pacey and Joey on Dawson's Creek, who was the number one couple of the 90s. I would say Dawson's Creek. You know what? That is correct. Wow! Yes! Yeah, followed by Dawson and Joey. Those were like the like number two. I was like, what? And see, I never watched Dawson's Creek. Neither did I, but I know. <laughs> All right. And then I'll do a last one with you. We'll do another one on Spotify. Here's the top 40 90s love songs. Which one's number one? Kiss Me from Six Feet of the Rich- Richer, A uh, Kiss from a Rose Seal, or Truly Madly Deeply by Savage Garden. Number one on Spotify. Seal? Close. No. But no, it Kiss was Truly me. Madly Deeply. I know, oh, that, okay. that would have been ah! a good choice. Yeah. I got it like, all the way wrong. <laughs> all okay. right, well, that's uh, that's it. Thank that's you so well much. I know yeah. the 90s. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for this interview, and we'll end it because I know you have to jump on stage very soon. Yeah. Okay. All right, well, I'm looking forward to the show tonight. Okay, cool. Thank you so much, Teresa. Thank you.